I often found that when I was starting off working in comedy that I'd come up with a joke and someone would go, but that's series four Alan Partridge, episode three. He's done owls. Can't do owls, he's done owls. And you'd be like, what? It's this kind of empirical collector's mindset, which is quite male, I think, of like (laughs) this sort of, yeah, this sort of sense of like, no, it's been done, you can't do it. No, no, like that. And that used to drive me insane. Because for a start, you're sort of like, well, if I'm going to do it, it's not going to be like that idea because I'm a woman and it hasn't been done by a woman before. It's going to be odd and it's going to be strange and it's going to be fresh. I always loved watching films and watched a lot of television, which I would have a lot of criticism from for my parents. Like, I was literally called square eyes by my parents. <laughs> Actually sort of started doing theatre um, and then sort of started getting you know, TV work, comedy work, and then, but the TV work was sort of not really fulfilling me. I felt like it was very sort of small in its ambitions. So on the side, I started making short films with um, a director friend of mine called Jacqueline Wright. And just the more I was doing that, the more liberating it was. You know, you don't have any boundaries. You can do whatever you want. If you want to make a Western, you can just do it. Because I'd come from theatre, I was like, I've got this really weird idea, I want to try this. And I just felt like quite often that was being slapped down. And um, when I was working with, with Jackie, it would be like, that's what I like about your, the way your mind works. It's like, that, yeah, let's do that crazy idea. And that mutual support was like really important creatively and not feeling inhibited, like, oh, I'm embarrassed to say this idea because maybe it will get laughed out of the room. Balls. Then a filmmaker that I'd worked with called Jamie Adams came to me and said, oh, I'm working with this company and they've got some money. You know, they really like you. Do you want to script something for them? It would just get made this year. And I was like, oh, my God, that's such an amazing opportunity. But... And I actually said, I can't do it, I'm pregnant. It just wouldn't work. And then kind of thought better of it and thought, why am I not just turning this to my advantage? So I said, yeah, okay, I've got this idea. Here's, here's the pitch for it. Came up with it off the top of my head, you know. And, um, and they were like, we love it. And I was like, okay, can we make it within the next two months before I actually, two or three months, you know, before I give birth? And they were like, yeah. And then Jamie Adams were like, was like, oh, well, I make rom-coms. So I don't see myself directing this, I think you've got to direct it. It was completely unnecessary to kill that man, he was really nice. He was a sop, a hipster sop. <laughs> Shh. Sacrifices I've had to make. What sacrifices? Children these days are really spoiled. Like, Mummy, I want a PlayStation. Mummy, I want you to kill that man. I don't want a new... I know you don't want a new daddy, but there was no possibility of that, so stop going on about it. We're used to seeing pregnant women depicted as sort of victims or really stupid or sort of like they've got baby brain or they're really upset or they're hormonal and they're just sort of being pushed around, therefore. I just wanted to flip that on its head and go, no, this is a woman who's taking decisions and she's not going, oh, my bump, I can't do anything. She's going, yeah, my bump, I'm going to do something, you know. <laughs> um, there was a point in the edit where the editor showed it to his friend, who's a comedy director, and the director got back and said, I'm not sure what you're aiming at, but we need to know exactly why she's doing what she's doing, or we just don't like her at all. Um, I was a bit like, okay, you're getting the wrong end of the stick, I don't care whether you like her or not, I just don't care. That's, that's, it doesn't matter to me. Deliberately, the first scene is like, it lulls you into the sense of like, okay, this man's creepy, this woman's a victim, and then that gets flipped on its head. The first two men are very um, sleazy in their own way, I suppose, and I kind of knew that people were going to go, oh, it's a feminist film where it's all about attacking men. And actually, I kind of felt that was just a bit too simplistic, because you know, the pressures that women have in society is from society, it's not just men. There are plenty of women supporting that system as well. I mean, I was just looking at Theresa May and the sort of hideous things that she wants to do that don't help women at all. I'm gonna cut you. Look, I I told you, I already give to loads of different charities. (laughs) What do you think they say? It's like some kind of new initiative. You never know with charities these days. You can't trust anyone. Well, that is true. I mean, everyone's out for themselves. Ah!
it was kind of about society and like this idea that when you have a child you're thinking well can is when this child's grown up is society going to look after this child in the way that I want to look after this child really it was about my fears and the way that I feel we're becoming more cruel and more self-obsessed and self-serving and individualistic in our approach to, to life you know having done Prevenge it's sort of like people going well it still could have been a fluke though couldn't it that film was it any good was it any good maybe the next one will be rubbish and then we'll know that she's actually rubbish and I'm like how much more do I have to do and I really think that that is something that women just have to deal with as, as filmmakers that you're just like people are waiting for you to slip up basically so they can go Whereas if a male director makes a film that's a bit of a dud or whatever, it's just like, oh, well, I'm really excited about what he's going to do next, you know? <laughs> um, doesn't matter. He's an artist. He's a genius. Doesn't matter.